What's up everybody? Welcome to another day in the BS for Build shop. Today we are going to do a run test on the car. We gotta plug in all the sensors, all the everything, get everything we can plugged into the car and happy, and then run the car one more time before we package up our ECU and send it off for a tune. Uh, after that, we're gonna tear everything down and then do a bunch more welding and fabrication on the inside of the car for things like floorboards we're hoping to get in, uh, mounts for the seats we're hoping to get in, uh, trunk, and a bunch of other good stuff. And some of these parts are gonna go off and get prepped for paint. Should be a very full day and the car will look like it did a month ago when we're done. Stay tuned. All right, it's go time. We're gonna break down all these panels, get all these panels over next door into the DIY paint booth, uh, pulling all that stuff off, and then we're gonna go ahead and rewire the car, wiring up all the sensors under the hood, uh, wiring our ECU back together, <laughs> running all the wires under the dash, getting everything plugged back in. All right, we got all of the doors and the, the exterior and everything all pulled off the car into the paint booth. They're ready to be cleaned up. Uh, and then while we were doing that, you guys saw Oscar build our acceleration pedal holder, also known as a gas pedal. So the gas pedal mounts in right there and the brake pedal comes right in next to it. It's perfectly clean and exactly where we want it. So I think Oscar got lucky on that one. So the floorboard goes over and over there and back to there and back to there when we're ready to do it. But for now, we gotta go ahead and grab all this wiring and rewire a BMW. Should be no problem. Back section's wired up except for grounding. Oscar's got most of the front wired up and Eric's complaining about his hole not being big enough. So we got the uh, pneumatic nibbler out and we're gonna need to come into our firewall and uh, gap that out a little bit. Uh, widen out that hole a little bit because uh, the rest of the wiring harness won't fit through with it. So bigger hole in the firewall, that's gonna go through, we'll connect that up there and then we're gonna jump in and uh, connect everything as far as the dash components that are needed. We've got the car fully wired. Everything that we can plug in and we plan on plugging in is totally plugged in, going all the way back and forward and everything like that. So now the deal is we're gonna turn it on, we're gonna clear the ECU of any codes, uh, and then we're gonna start the car, we're gonna run it for a little bit, and then we're gonna pull any codes that comes back. And that's the list that we're gonna give off to the tuner so he can basically program out some stuff. For instance, like the airbags, he'll just code those out and then it won't throw a warning anymore. And it'll also give him a little bit more information about how the car is running and what it's doing uh, before we get the ECU off to him. All right, we cleared the car's ECU, uh, and then we checked for codes. I noted all those codes, and then now we're gonna go ahead and start it, run it, check for codes again, and then we're done. It's time to tear down the wires. It's time to now break down all the wiring and take it out of the car and throw it in a box somewhere. Um, we pulled all the codes after running it. Nothing too major came up, but it is in limp mode. So a couple things could cause that. Uh, we didn't put any brake fluid in here and we didn't connect the uh, sensor to the brake fluid. I don't think, or maybe we did, but we didn't have brake fluid in there. Um, so that could be it. Uh, it thinks the steering wheel had an issue when it really doesn't, but we left it detached. That could be it. I'm not really sure. Our goal is really though to not be in limp mode when we go to SEMA. I mean, the plan is actually to have a full tune on here, but it'd be great to just have it not in limp mode. So uh, now we basically pull the, uh, the DME out of that. That's the East BMW ECU. We're gonna pull it out of that little box there and I'm gonna mail it off to the tuner and he's gonna put the base map on it. Um, and then we're gonna get another refined map later. So um, that's all good. Now it's time to, yeah, pull all the wiring out of the car.
We've got all of the wiring out of the car now. And it looks awesome <laughs> with it all gone. Um, so this is where we have to make a decision. This is key game time now. Um, we were planning on, you know, like if we didn't have time to do floorboards or we didn't have time to build the rear like trunk bottom or anything like that, that we were just gonna go to SEMA without doing it. But we're in this really weird gray zone where we can kind of, if we stretch and we get a lot of stuff done really fast, we can build floor pans, we can build all the trunk out, we can build all the stuff out that we wanna have painted with the, like we wanna have it painted along with the rest of the frame of the car. Um, and we think we can pull it off. So although we did not get enough stuff done today, we're gonna just call it a night for today. We're gonna come back early tomorrow. Uh, this will be a little bit of a longer episode and we'll just hopefully kill it tomorrow and get all the rest of the metal fabrication done on the inside of the car that we want before SEMA. All right, it's the next morning. I only got a couple hours before the guys come into the shop. I wanna try and get some of this uh, rust spot stuff out of the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, I don't think I'm gonna cut a patch for this. I think I'm gonna add some, we got all the rust out of this, so I'm gonna add a little bit of steel into there, sand that down. This needs to be cut out, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out and weld a patch into here. Well, it's kind of the same story with both of these. I had them in a pretty good spot and I should have left them and then I continued and I kind of started chasing uh, kind of too thin a metal to be welding around. So you can see there's these uh, surface imperfections. I mean, the steel is solid and that's not gonna go anywhere or, like rust anymore, but there's these little surface imperfections. So I'll just uh, put a layer of body filler over those. They're gonna have to or else it'd be obvious uh, when we go to paint. Luckily, this panel was already wobbly as all hell from uh, where they do the pinch welds and stuff. It really like, you know, it's, it's seen some abuse through the years. So. That's gonna be okay. So just a layer of body, quick layer of body filler or just glazing putty really over both of those and then they're good to go. Um, you guys mentioned a lot that I needed to fully weld in all these patches because uh, if we do body filler that the moisture from behind it is gonna absorb into the body filler. And uh, I didn't think about that, but that's totally right. Um, these places should be blocked off from moisture, but other than just ambient moisture, uh, but you're right, so I'm gonna need to come in here and any of the little pinholes or anything, I either need to put like fiberglass in them, something that's waterproof, I got a fiberglass the other side, or what I might do is use the Raptor liner on the other side, which is totally waterproof and water protectant, and then I could just go ahead and body filler the other side. Uh, but I'll come up with a solution for that. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and jack up the car on this side and jump down there and see the extent of the damage. Well, it's not too crazy back there. Uh, there's a lot of dirt that got trapped in there. Obviously at one point some moisture got trapped in there and then ate its way out through this uh, piece. But we got all solid metal to work with. Uh, I got all the dirt out of there, dirt and rust mixture. And uh, so just like the other thing, I'm gonna cut a square out, go ahead and weld it in there and uh, that should do it. All right, well that went okay. Uh, I'm not gonna do it with all metal because uh, I got too big of a gap here on my template and this metal is a little bit too weak. So rather than do what I did on the last one, spend forever uh, and still not be happy with it, what I'm gonna do is just use the fiberglass reinforced body filler and just from here, I'll just go like that and like that and then we'll just sand it straight that way, sand it straight that way and it'll be done a lot faster. And the fiberglass will make sure it stays waterproof and uh, also add a little bit more strength to that section. So the, mat the metal's basically just the scaffolding for everything. Next up on the agenda, we have all those floor supports on that other side. We need the same thing on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out all that flat bar and weld it in. All right, we've got all the framing tack welded in the car now, so that's our framing for our floorboards to go in. On the other side, Oscar has templated out exactly where our bolt holes need to go for our seat brackets. So mounting the seat brackets is a little bit technical, but the idea is, because we're gonna put metal over it anyways, we need to have support underneath, but then metal on top. So the idea that we're gonna do is we're gonna drill the holes 
um, in the brackets, uh, in the supports, we're going to drill the holes in there now, and then we're going to lay the floor pan over it, and then we're going to come from the bottom and drill back through the floor pan again once we're done, and we'll have all our holes in the right spot. I think I'm missing, yeah, I'm missing a support. I got to add a support right there, and then I'm going to go fully weld this stuff up. All right, we had a bit of a team meeting, and here's what we've decided. I'm going to stop doing any breaks for the camera, and we're going to 100% focus on work. So this is just going to be one massive time lapse, basically, through the rest of the episode. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm focusing on the firewall, closing things like this, closing all this stuff, uh, building this piece that goes right here, and through there and around there. Oscar's focused on the floorboards. He's going to do all the floorboards, the welding up that I just talked about. All that stuff is Oscar. Eric is focused on the, the wheel arches, the internal wheel arches, and all the back trunk boards and everything like this. So. Here we go, should be quite a transformation.
Just wrapped up a very hard, very full day work. Let me show you where we got. Firewall, completely done. Everything tying all the way into the floorboards, transmission tunnel, all the way around, everything is completely done, except for this middle piece right here, because once the engine's out, I didn't want to get, I didn't want to get any sparks or any uh, metal shavings too close to the engine. So once we pull the engine, we just trim this, weld it up, seam seal it. That's going to get seam sealer all over it. So you're going to see we did a lot of spot welding. So spot welding or tack welding, whatever you want to call it, all over. And then all of these seams get seam sealer put on top of them. Um, it adds to rigidity, but it also helps, you know, keep the seam sealed from the elements. That's, that's the idea of it. Uh, floor pans are in, they're welded into the floor supports underneath them. Accelerator pedal's already in there. Brake pedal space is all mapped out and all good on this side. So you can see that we had to use a lot of different pieces. Um, and then coming back, back here, we skipped the midsection uh, for now. Um, Eric's work on the trunk is nothing short of amazing. Super, super cool. So you got the recessed area for the fuel cell to go in. Fuel cell still stays in the same spot. Got the beginning of the um, uh, wheel well uh, starting to go in there. We're going to have another one in on the other side as well. Battery tray, room for wires and boxes and stuff like that back there as well as back there. And then coming around over here, we have most of our floor pan. We just did, since there wasn't any pedals or anything to worry about here, it was just one piece that kind of curves up here and connects into the firewall. So, we took extra day out to get this stuff done, um, and we're going to squeeze a little bit more time out of tomorrow, and Eric is going to do the rest of our wheel wells and finish off this back section. So the entire car um, will be completely sealed away from the elements, meaning we're not going to have any open spaces on the bottom of the car uh, when we're driving around. Which is, which is super, super awesome. I really didn't think that we would get there. It really didn't matter for SEMA, but I'm glad that we're getting there, and I'm glad that we got this far. Got a little signs of use on the old face there. That's a wrap for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you like BS for Build, you like what we do, and you want to help out and support, head over to bsforbuild.com. Scroll down to the shop there. Any of the merchandise, if you want to pick up a shirt or something like that. Also, hats are in. Hats will be in the store and today or tomorrow. Not really sure. They should be in the store, but I gotta go to sleep. Anywho, hats will be in the store very soon. Um, if you pick up any of the merchandise there, all the proceeds go directly towards supporting these builds and nowhere else. Also, we have Patreon. The link is in the description down below. Thank you guys once again for watching. Dreams are coming true here. It sounds cheesy, it sounds corny to say, but like, we're, every day we get a step closer. We have like 15 days left or 16 days left to see us, so we're getting close to two weeks left. Unbelievable. Leaps and bounds right now. Leaps and bounds, guys. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Please continue watching. It motivates the hell out of us. It even helps support us. Just you guys watching helps support the channel and helps support us to all be out here and do what we love doing. So thank you guys. And I'll see you tomorrow. Peace!